Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from round 2 of this year's Schach Bundesliga. It is Nodrebek Abdusatro who just finished the tournament uh, that was the Qatar Masters. He almost won first place. He had to go into tiebreaks against um, uh, his teammate also from uh, from Uzbekistan, uh, also Nodrebek uh, Yakubov and uh, he 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 lost um, uh, in the tiebreaks and here he faces Thomas Bertsen uh, who we already featured on the channel I think twice but this is the first time that we are featuring him as a grandmaster so far we've only had him as an international master he won his grandmaster title uh, this year in june and this is a beautiful game a beautiful king hunt and the mistake that allowed it is uh too complicated to uh to explain while i'm showing you the game so i will go back to it after the game so stay tuned for that as well it's a really complicated uh maneuver so let's check it out Noderbeck has the white pieces and he opens with e4 we have c5 uh thomas goes for the sicilian defense knight of three and e6 going for the french variation of the sicilian d4 captures captures and and now knight to c6 with knight to c3 and knight to f6 so uh, all standard stuff nothing new here the Taimano variation bishop to e2 we have a bishop to b4 uh, now pinning the knight here and castles bishop captures on c3 b captures and now knight captures on e4 uh, we have knight captures on c6 d captures on c6 and now bishop to d3 offering the c3 pawn uh, and while you can capture it it's nothing fancy as uh, queen h5 is really annoying black cannot castle you don't want to play g6 otherwise you're going to weaken your pawn structure you could play h6 but this will also weaken your pawn structure and if you play something like queen f6 then comes bishop to g5 and if queen to d4 you continue sorry uh developing rook fd1 uh, and still uh, black has to decide how to play this probably bishop d7 maybe you castle queen side uh, it's uh uh you know not worth the hassle for this double the c c pawn so here knight to c5 this is the standard move in the position uh and now queen to g4 uh there is a game where bishop to a3 was played sort of an idea to um, uh, force black to capture on d3 you undouble your pawns and you sort of keep the black king in the center of the board uh but uh, f6 will be played king to f7 rook to e8 and it's uh, actually perfectly fine for black maybe even better so instead after knight to c5 queen to g4 this is the main attempt we have queen to f6 and now bishop to g5 attacking the queen queen captures on c3 and now there are a couple of games that reach this position for example rook a to d1 is a known move uh, but here we have queen to g3 and it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game the threat of course is if um, uh, uh, if uh, thomas castles bishop captures on h7 check picks up the queen on c3 so that's the idea behind the que uh, uh, tricky queen to g3 move so knight captures on d3 eliminating the strong bishop and now not captures with the pawn or with the queen now comes rook a to d1 this was the plan uh, because now if you try to save the knight let's say you go knight e5 rook to d8 is just checkmate so the knight will hang and you will uh, get the uh, d file for your rook maybe even double up uh, on the d file so queen to c5 and now rook captures on d3 we have pawn to f6 challenging the bishop now rook f to d1 uh, again you cannot capture uh, the bishop on g5 because rook d8 check will pick up the rook on h8 so here we have castles uh, and now bishop to h6 Noderbeck now threatens checkmate on g7 so queen back to e7 uh, and now look at this rook to d8 beautiful beautiful rook lift uh, point of course is that uh, you cannot capture twice as the queen is stuck here guarding the g7 pawn and now the mistake that i've uh, mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, happens right here and uh, the point is here you can play b6 you can play b5 you can uh, uh uh, you can play some moves but you cannot play c5 c5 is a pawn that should remain on c6 and why we're going to discuss after the game so here pawn to c5 uh, it's a crucial mistake that loses the game uh, so even feel free to pause the video and figure out how to take advantage of this while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing the mistake behind pawn to c5 and also how to take advantage of black's position as black really can't move uh, a piece. There's really nothing you can do.
Uh, point being that even if you played b6, you still cannot play bishop to b7 because rook to d7 would put too much pressure on g7. So you can't move the queen, you can't move the rook, you can't really move anything. But uh, uh, there were better moves than uh, uh, c5, and the way you punish it is pawn to h4. Uh, now, the, the idea is fairly simple. It's h5, you're going to capture on g7, and then, uh, well, the idea is that black just uh, doesn't have any moves. Black, there's nothing black can play here. Uh, Thomas played pawn to b5. Now comes pawn to h5, and now after pawn to e5, opening up the light square bishop, uh, just bishop captures on g7. So what are you going to play here? Queen captures on g7, now rook captures on f8, forcing the black king to capture, king captures on f8, and now rook to d8 with check. You cannot go to e7 as the queen would hang, so queen to, king to f7, and now queen to b3 with check. c4 doesn't do anything as you will capture on b5, and again... Uh, no way to uh, no way to avoid everything here. This is a threat. Qu uh, queen to, uh, d d5 is a threat. Uh, th there's no move that helps you here. So instead, after queen to b3 check, king to e7 was played, and now queen to d5, putting pressure on the rook, but also. Uh, just threatening queen to d6 check, which is even more potent. So queen to h6, hoping that uh, Norbeck grabs the rook on a8, but of course he doesn't. He plays queen to d6 with check, king to f7, and now pawn to f4. A beautiful move that you just throw in in the middle of the attack, uh, simply to mess with uh, any uh, plans that black might have of defending the position, like maybe some sort of a perpetual with queen to c1 check in the future. Uh, because if queen captures now, uh, you will of course deliver a check, queen to f8 check, and now you just pick up the queen uh, king here rook to d6 check king f5 and rook captures on f6 will win the black queen and you don't even get to enjoy your uh, bishop and rook because after queen to d6 there's no way to play uh, this will either win the rook or if you play bishop b7 then this wins the bishop so uh, black will uh, be left with either a bishop or a rook versus a queen so of course completely winning for white so e captures on f4 was played instead but now queen to c7 with check King to e6, and now queen to c6 with check. Now, uh, if you go to f7, then it's a very quick checkmate. Queen to e8 with check, king to g7, and queen to e7. This will be checkmate. The pawn, of course, covers the g6 square. So if uh, king to f5, which was played in the game, now comes queen to d5 with check. Again, the pawn covering g6 is very important. Uh, that's why h4, h5 was so crucial for the attack. King to g4, rook to g8 with check. Uh, we have king to h4, and now there is, uh, well, there are m many moves that win the game, but there is one that ends the game on the spot. And of course, Noderbeck played it, pawn to g3 with check. Uh, opening up this diagonal, queen to h1 will be checkmate as the rook controls this um, uh, th this g file. Uh, okay, not right away, uh, you might be able to, to block with the bishop, but it doesn't matter really uh, what you do. Uh, the, the point is, is if... Um, Sorry, if f captures on g3, then queen to e4 check. Now you cannot block with the bishop or you get checkmated, so king captures on h5. Now queen to h1 with check, and after you um, put the bishop to h3, just queen captures on h3 will be checkmate. But uh, uh, Thomas did not allow this. He uh, he allowed an even quicker checkmate. He just played king to h3, and here queen to h1 was... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, queen to g2 was checkmate, uh, and that's how uh, nicely Noderbeck won this game. Now, just quickly to go back to that position where we discussed why c, uh, c5 is such a mistake. So, uh, like I said, let's play b5 instead, uh, as it's a move that Thomas also played, but after c5. Now, why doesn't the same idea work? Because, okay, black cannot move anything, we already uh, found that, but let's see. h4, a5, and now h5, everything the same e5, and now uh, what does bishop captures on g7 do? The move that Noderbeck used to win the game. Bishop captures, queen captures, rook captures, king captures, and now rook to d8 with check. Everything the same, king to f7, and now queen to b3 with check. King to e7 is the move you now have that you didn't have in the line that Thomas played because now the pawn is on c6. Uh, you do not have queen to d5. That's the, uh, that's the big difference. So... Uh, very, very, very tricky stuff, but uh, I mean, I if you see this, I mean, good for you, but uh, here, w w without being able to move a piece, I mean, you you're happy to even find a move like c5. 
Uh, and I guess, okay, maybe you could argue that B6 or B5 is a bit more logical as it will allow you to somehow develop your light square bishop. But like we said, the bishop is never moving from this diagonal uh, as rook to D7 would just be unstoppable. So this is, unless you really, really know how to play this by heart, uh, because it's uh, the, the position is dead draw. Uh, obviously, Noderbeck prepared it very well. If you don't know it, uh, your opponent will blunder. So maybe it's a nice uh, line for you guys to learn. Uh, if you if you uh, play against the Sicilian a lot, if you play against the Taiman of Sicilian, uh, maybe, you know, a, a couple of nice tricks uh, and a couple of very, very uh, crafty moves like Queen to G3 and then, uh, you know, uh, bringing the rook to d1 with tempo is there is checkmate on d8 so uh, i'm sure you can uh, take something from this game and use it in your own games uh so yeah uh, that's the game very nicely done by noderbeck who not only almost won the Qatar masters but now just continues playing incredible chess and just crushing uh, uh newly appointed grandmasters like this uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope it improved your uh, Sunday somewhat. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Chad Smith, uh, Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm, Gampati, Morty Anonymous Person, and uh, Daniel Taylor for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And uh, what uh, what do you think about the fight yesterday, Volkanovsky versus Mahachev? Uh, what, a, what, what a miniature, huh? Uh, incredible stuff. Uh, see you soon.